Oh, my hot chocolate's a bit too hot to drink yet. I'll have a sip of my Ribena first. Lubricate my throat. Right, welcome back to Banished. Um, it's been a few days since I recorded uh, the last one, so I've obviously completely forgotten everything. I actually remember, I remember that last time I said I was going to go away and, and do a bit of playing without you. Um, I haven't done that, so... <laughs> Sorry. Yes, because we were stuck in a bit of an impasse, weren't we? Where, uh, well, not an impasse, but just a sort of bit of a lull in the game. Why have all my things disappeared? All of my things should not have disappeared. Uh, well, that's not what I wanted. Oh, a child named Ralpha was born. A child named Magdalene Tyne was born. Yes, this is our little event log. Oh, that would be kind of useful to have down here, wouldn't it? So we can see what's like been going on. We can toggle pop-ups and stuff like that. Yeah, that would be uh, a useful thing to have. Our map up there. Our jobs list there. Marvellous. I know why they disappeared. That's because I did briefly come back into the game to make a thumbnail. <laughs> That's why they had disappeared. Um, yes, so what were we doing? We had sent our labourers out here to mine all of this stone. Because we need stone for shit. We had... That was kind of it, wasn't it? Are they still just planting trees? Yeah, they're just planting trees and not cutting them down. They're going to have to start cutting them down soonish, though, because logs are getting a little bit low. <clears throat> just a little bit, although we won't be building anything particularly soon. We had our tailors and our tannery and our blacksmith set up, and there was the uh, unfolding drama of uh, Diamona being the tailor and um, Tylord being the tanner. However, I have now noticed... That in the sort of five or so minutes since the last, like, in-game minutes since the last part ended, Tylord has become a labourer again, and Diamona has gone back to being a forester. So, the, um... <laughs> the fucking reunion between those two didn't last very long, did it? Jesus. Oh, guys, I thought you were patching stuff up. I thought you were back in, like, a working partnership over here. But no, no. She stuck it out for five minutes and then she thought, she thought, fuck this, I'm going back to being a forester. I don't want to have to look at his stupid face every day. And then they obviously, the village obviously realised that Tylord was just a fucking awful tanner. And so it made him a labourer again. He's back to being a labourer at the age of 32. <laughs> He's still living on his own, being a labourer. How much food has he got? Oh god, his food's even going down. He's not even that... that stocked up on food anymore and it's not like we're fucking low on the stuff we've got 3372 food yeah that's more food than we need but uh never mind yes he's got 21 fish six pumpkins 10 wild deer meat which is just venison but you know um 30 firewood oh now he's only got two pumpkins and fucking hell he went from what was that was that like four pumpkins or something that was uh, did that say, like, ten wild deer meat before or something like that? I know it, I read it, like, literally 30 seconds ago, but I can't remember. But he's just had a meal and he's eaten, like, fucking <laughs> three deer or something. Anyway, let's not question that too much. Um, he's probably comfort eating <laughs> through the depression. <laughs> um, right, yes, yeah, so who is our tanner, then? Who is our tanner? Weevily! Weevily was... I think one of the children who was already here when the, um, yeah, I don't think Weebly was born here. I think he came here as a child. T uh, Weebly is our tanner. And Callus is our tailor. Yes, Callus is, uh, Callus was an adult when she arrived. She's one of the originals, the originals. That It's getting a bit big, the village now, though. We're up to 27 people. It's getting a little bit difficult for me to keep track of everybody. And then at some point, there'll just be like a massive population boom where there'll suddenly be like 60 people and I'll have no idea who half of them are. And then eventually once we've like, you know, started filling out the map, there'll be like 400 people and it loses that personal touch at that point in the game. You sort of, you lose that connection with the actual people wandering around because you don't know who any of them are. Like the originals will have died off by then. Um, which is a bit sad kind of, but you know, it becomes more about sort of building up little communities within areas and stuff like that. Um, We'll see if we stick it out that long. I don't know. We're going to go until this series stops being entertaining. That's what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> I know I said that we would go until we filled the map. But, you know. We'll go until I feel like stopping. How is about that? Right. Now, I believe last time I sort of toyed with the idea of building a um, trader's outpost. 
trading post, whatever it's called. Because that would actually be kind of useful. Like, there's not much else we can do at this point in time. Um, we've got... Yeah, we've got our tanner and our tailor who are making nice coats. And we've got plenty of coats. We've got our blacksmith making tools and we've got plenty of tools. I mean, the cap, I think, is 50, isn't it? The cap, yeah, the tool limit and the clothes limit is 50. So, I mean, we're nearly at the flipping limit for tools. And we will be for clothes soon enough. I think the only thing holding us back there is the fact they keep running out of wool. But, um, <clears throat> that's fine. Um, yeah, we've got 16 warm coats and 7 hide coats. But, I mean, they'll keep bringing in wool. The hunters will keep bringing in wool, wool when they kill sheep. So, just slowly, we'll have wool trickling through. Um, which will be fine. I mean, you know, we're not in any desperate need for coats. So, yeah, we don't need any more houses. And we can't start building things like orchards and um, pastures and stuff until we've bought things to put in them from the trade. Isn't it pretty over here? Isn't it pretty? Sometimes in Banish you just have to stop and kind of go, oh wow, isn't it pretty? Look at all the deer grazing on the nice open fields that we're soon going to demolish everything on and build our houses and our quarries and our mines and pollute the earth as we do. <laughs> But for now, it's actually quite pretty. Got all the nice pretty trees. Isn't that lovely? Yes, anyway, I was going to build a trading port because um, I can't actually think of anything else to build. So, trading port. I believe it did take up quite a lot of um, trading posts. There we go. Allows for the trade of resource or resources with merchants. And it needs 80 stone and 40 iron. Ah, we're bringing in a decent amount of stone from them mining all of the stone up there. So we want to put it, firstly, can we put it where I want to put it? We can put it, yeah, we can put it there. Um, how do I rotate things again? There we go. Put it there. That would be a really good place for it. Put it like there. That would be really cute. And then we build a little bridge across. Um, oh, should we put it? Or maybe we could put it like round, around the corner? Um, I'm not sure it'll fit there. I'm not sure I like it there. No, I like it there. I think that's quite cute. We'll tuck it in as much as we can. Uh, there. Build it there, but we'll need a bridge across first. So, we'll just get a little wooden bridge. There's no need to go too fancy with like a big stone one or anything. Get a little wooden bridge and put it across there. We need six builders now. Um, we'll get two going on for the, um, has that just assigned the builders to the fucking trading port? No, 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 no. You can't fucking build the fucking trading port until you've built the fucking bridge game. Use your bloody common sense, dear me. The fishermen still haven't worked out how to fish. Lelano. Fucking hell, Lelano. <laughs> who was the one who, who first fell off the pier? It was one of the ladies, wasn't it? I can't remember who it was. Was it Rainy? I think it was Rainy. Yes, I think it was her, and she's Leleno's wife, so yeah, she's just taught him how to fish. Um, oh god, and their two sons are fishermen as well. Bloody hell. <laughs> well, I say sons. Brennan is 20 and Rainy is 28, so maybe he's just a little brother. Who knows? Um, oh, the Tanners has now run out of animal skins to make leather, and the, uh, the Taylor's run out of wool, so both of them are now just labourers, which is fine. Um, I need labourers bringing in fucking stone from over here so I can build things. Not that there's anything I need to build, but you know. Hey, what, what limit have you reached? Oh, the log limit. The log limit's only 200. Huh. Might want to put that up a bit. I put up the fucking... Why did I put up the firewood limit to 500? Oh, I know why I did that. It's because... <laughs> fucking... It's because I came in to make the thumbnail. I've, I've already said this, haven't I? That's why my things disappeared. I, 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 I opened up the game to make the thumbnail and that had the little cap thing above it and it was annoying me because it didn't look as pretty. <laughs> uh, the log limit can go up though. I think the log limit should be maybe 500, although they're not actually bringing in any logs yet. They're just planting trees. Um, so that's fine. See all these little tiny trees that they've planted? I want these trees to grow quicker so it becomes a nice thick forest before I start chopping them down. Um, I want it to be nice and thick. I mean, you can see where like the iron and the stone was that we mined. And then we've planted little trees. Autumn, that's 
place getting frosty. We're getting on for winter. We're getting on for winter and I'm not even thinking about it. That's how confident I am. That's how confident I am in this village. And that's a bad sign because <laughs> it's when you start feeling like that that uh, all of a sudden Banish just comes and fucks you over. <laughs> It just comes and goes, eh, no, actually, your life is going to get very, very difficult now. Something you never expected is just going to come along and screw you over massively. Um, let's put a little path up to the trading thing. Ooh, can you hear the rain lashing against my window? It is fucking pissing down out there. I'm, like, really pissing down, like... Um, I did a 10 hour shift today, so I did like from 10 in the morning to late at night. And when I drove into work, like when, when I went out of my front door, I had to jump around a puddle. <clears throat> like a really deep puddle <laughs> that would have like got my socks wet. Um, and when I was driving in, it was like absolutely pissing it down. And while I was at work, because I have to kind of go outside sometimes, and it was just pissing it down and pissing it down and pissing it down for about the first two or three hours of my shift. And then the sun came out, and it was quite nice for a while, and throughout kind of the day. And then um, when it got to about six o'clock, I went like out the back, and <laughs> there's like a sort of, um, uh, what you call it, like a kind of bit where the roof comes over, but you're outside, but the roof is over, so you're kind of sheltered. And, uh, and it was pitch black. Well, it wasn't pitch black, it was dark. And um, the rain was coming down and I couldn't really see it because it was dark, but I could hear it on the roof. And I stepped out, I hadn't realised it was raining until I stepped outside and heard the fucking rain pelting down on this roof. And I thought, oh my fucking God. And, and I drove home in absolute torrential rain. And there are three roads that you can take like through the town to get to my flat. And the one that I usually take is closed at the minute for roadworks. So I went round the long way and went up one of the other roads. And that one was flooded. And when I say it was flooded, I mean my car would have disappeared. <laughs> it had been raining that much because there's like a dip down in the road and it had just completely flooded. Um, and I had to turn around and come back. But there was a bus sat waiting to get through because there was like, um, like workers trying to like clear the flooding. But there was a bus sat and obviously it couldn't turn around because it's quite a narrow road and it was too long to turn around. So it was just sat there with its hazard lights on, waiting for them to somehow clear this flood in the road. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that poor bus driver. <laughs> I, hope, I hope his shift wasn't meant to finish anytime soon. Uh, yeah, so he was just sat there with his hazards on. So yeah, it is really pissing it down. Really, I don't know if you can hear it if I go quiet. You might not be able to hear it over the hum of the computer but if I go a bit quiet. I might move my microphone to the window so you can hear the rain. I'm moving my microphone, this might sound awful. I might edit this bit out. There, there, there. Can you hear the rain? That was the rain. I don't know if you could hear it. Um, but yeah, that was the rain. It's really fucking torrential, like really torrential. It's not just a bit of rain. It's like really torrential. It's brilliant, I love it. I hope it's like this tomorrow because it's my day off tomorrow. And there's nothing I love more than it being like really torrential rain on a day off. I adore that. And I love it when it's like dark during the day so you have to have the lights on. I've always loved that ever since being a kid. I remember when I was like in first school, I loved it when it got to that time of year where they, they had to have the lights on in the classroom at school. During the, I always loved that. I loved it if it was a day where it was so dark during the day that I had to have the lights on in the classroom. I don't know why, but I've always loved that. Having to have the lights on during the day. Right, so, um, <laughs> there we go. That's enough about my weird quirks. I love how this little storage area is just stocked up with nothing but stone. Because it's what all the labourers are bringing in from uh, from over there. So, uh, we've got plenty of stone going on now. Um, we've reached the limit on tools. We've got no animal skins to turn into leather and therefore no leather to turn into coats. So, these three over here... Oh, is it still the same people? Yes, it's still callous and... Um, Weevily, who can hold down a job better than Tylord can. <laughs> Tylord's fucking useless. Nobody wants to hire him. Um, who's our blacksmith then? Messica! Oh, hello, Messica. I haven't seen anything from you in a while, my darling. But they've reached the tool cap, so he you can see he's working as a labourer. 
Um, his job is a blacksmith, but he's got nothing to do, so he's working as a labourer because people are not slackers in the world of Banished. They they are always working, except Ty Lord, of course. He's a bit of a fucking slacker, and he bless him. Oh, he's a hunter! Oh, Ty Lord! Oh, is she still the forester? You see, I think he's trying to get back with Diamona. I think that's what he's doing. Because she's the forester and she's all frolicking around the forest planting trees. And now he's managed to somehow get himself a job as a hunter. I don't know who he managed to get drunk to uh, agree to that. But yeah, that's that's just so that he can like bump into her in the forest because he's trying to rekindle things, you know. I mean, he obviously succeeded once because I'm convinced that Rich is his child. There's nobody else who could conceivably be the father. I mean, you know... I know that people go around having affairs with each other, but I just don't believe that of any of my villagers. I don't. I've just, I have more faith in them than that. Um, <clears throat> they have one daughter called Lena and another one called Linnea? 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 Something like that. One of them's a builder. Oh yes, have you built the bridge yet? They have built the bridge. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, I love a bridge. Oh, that's lovely. That's really lovely. And then they're going to build a path round to the um, the trading post. Um, we've got two builders assigned, but only one has actually decided to uh, go and work on the trading post. God knows what the other ones are doing. Hady! Hady is working on the trading post. What the fuck's Lania doing then? Is she just building the path? Oh, well. Um, what else are we going to have over in this bit? That was the wind. That was <laughs> going against my window. Oh, it really is blowing a fucking gale out there as well. It's changing of the seasons, going into autumn. I love that. Absolutely love that. Mmm. And I've got hot chocolate and marshmallows. Because there is nothing better than being in on a cold, rainy, horrible, wet night with hot chocolate and marshmallows and the heating on and a nice big cuddly hoodie or jumper or whatever. And a blanket. It's just the best thing, man. It's just the best thing. Um, right, yes. Who are you? What are you doing? Lena, the builder. Has she worked out to actually, yes, go and um, build the thing yet? Or are you just working on the path? You're just working on the path. And that's Heidi, who's also working on the path. Wait, if Lena and Hadia are both building the, uh, the, um, the path, who are you? Kristen! Kristen, who is a forester, but is for some reason over here working on the trading port. I have no idea why, but, um, thank you for lending a hand, my dear. Maybe you've fallen out with your fellow foresters. Maybe the whole Diamona and Tylord situation is getting a little bit tense. And she just doesn't want to be in the middle of it. I mean, who are the other foresters we've got? We've got, there's Diamona, there's Kristen, and there's Gisela. So, who was one of the uh, children originally, wasn't she? She's the one who had kids when she was like 12 or something. Um, so yeah, so we've got the three girls as foresters. And then hunters, who have we got? Where's the hunting cabin? That's the hunting cabin. We've got Sabrinley, and we've got Ty Lord, little twat. And then we've got Tavo. So, so Brindley's a girl. But we've got Tylord and Tavo. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think who they would be confiding in. You know, ret like retrospectively. <laughs> I don't know where that word came from. Respectively is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Not retrospectively. Um, yeah, because you know, there might be like, it might, it might be making... I might be putting strains on friendships is what I'm thinking if they're confiding in people about sort of the awkwardness that's going on between them and people are getting caught up in the middle when they maybe don't want to be you know the whole situation could just be like really uncomfortable which might be why Kristen has just decided you know what fuck it I'm gonna go and work on the trading port instead like fuck planting trees I don't enjoy it anymore it used to be a really relaxing nice job out frolicking in the forest but no now all of this family drama going on it's just not helping Who's that? Is that Ty Lord? Are you Ty Lord? No, that's Tavo doing his hunting job. Do we actually get to see him killing the deer? I've never actually watched the hunters. Yeah, he's walking up to a deer. These deer are very tame. Like, they're very unperplexed by the fact that there's a fucking hunter just wandering around. 
But I mean, at some point, like we see, we see animal skins lying around and meat lying around that they will pick up and carry. I don't think we actually see them killing anything, though, do we? I really just want to watch him now, just see what he does. No oh, fuck! I've just built hot chocolate down myself. Oh, fuck's sake! <laughs> I literally missed my mouth. Do you do that? I like I sort of went like into the side of my mouth rather than like directly onto my mouth, and like half of it just went down my fucking hoodie. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> I've lost table. Where's he gone? Oh my god! Hot chocolate order myself. I'm all wet now. Not in a fun way. Right? Who's that? That's Kristen. Kristen's gone back to being a forester. Then decided she couldn't um, avoid it forever. That's Irvine the herbalist. He's the one who lives there, isn't it? Yes. Lovely Irvine and Gisella will just ignore the um, age gap, uh, and he's the he's the forest uh, he's the herbalist and she's a forester, <coughs> and little Ralpha. I hope he stays as the herbalist because it's really nice having the herbalist live in that cottage, like right behind the herbalist hut. I quite like that. They're just a little forest family, trying to stay away from all the village drama. But then bloody bloody yeah, Ty Lord and um, Diamona keep coming out <laughs> into the forest having their little dramas. Um, oh, our Lyle's the woodcutter these days, is he? What's Eleanor? Eleanor's a fisherman. That's nice. Um, and both of their children are labourers. Which is interesting, because Eleanor and our Lyle have always done important jobs. I mean, not that being a labourer isn't an important job. Um, I only look down on labourers when it happens to be Ty Lord. <laughs> it's the only labourer I look down on. But uh, yes, they've always done like important things. I think Arlyle was the first farmer, wasn't he? And Eleanor, I think, was the first woodcutter, possibly. She's definitely been the woodcutter at points in her career. How's this going? I've only got two builders assigned to it, but I'm not like in a mad rush for it to be built. So um, just let the other stay as labourers. Wow, this fucking um, storage area is really, really built up with stone, hasn't it? Like really quickly. Um, how are they getting that stone up there without, like, machinery or something? How are they doing that? What magic are they using? It's like the mystery of how they built Stonehenge, isn't it? Who are you and why are you standing there looking gormless? Oh, that's Arlisle. He's working, apparently, as the woodcutter. Yes, he's gathering wood. He was just having a moment standing there in the snow thinking to himself, that's all right. Um... Should we change the crops from pumpkin to squash? I know it's winter and they won't be planting anything yet, but we've had pumpkin like three years in a row. We're on our third year. Yeah, we've had pumpkins three years in a row. We'll switch to squash. According to our event log, nothing of note has happened since early summer and it is now winter. So nobody's grown up, nobody's had any kids, nobody's died in that time. Yeah, actually we want to think about building a cemetery just in case somebody dies, don't we? thing we want to think about. We also want to think about what else we want to go on over in this area <coughs> other than just the trading port because um, it's sort of a bit boxed in isn't it? I mean you could just about get a path through there but other than that it's like its own little contained area. I wonder what we want to build here. Do we want to build anything at all? Do we want... Actually when we start building like more advanced stuff like the the chapel and the town hall um, and the hospital more like town kind of stuff we could build it over here couldn't we and have some stone houses once we have like um, enough stone to start building things like that I mean we've got 605 stone and uh, the town hall needs 124 and then 48 iron. I mean we could build a town hall we could do that easily. We're a bit low on logs, I have to say. We should probably start chopping down some trees. Um, yeah, especially as we're now in winter and they're going to be needing more firewood and stuff like that. So, chop down. Although, I mean, we're still over the limit of firewood, aren't we? Because... Oh, I put it down to 300, did I? Yeah, 300 is fine. And now we've reached the limit, yes. Um, we've got plenty of firewood. We've got plenty of everything. We've almost got too much of everything, which is why it's a good idea to build a trading port because then we can trade some of the stuff that we've got too much of. Um, how's that going, by the way? They are gathering stone and iron. Um, yes, but we could build a town hall because a town hall doesn't need anybody. You don't need to assign like a mayor or anything. The town hall is just there and it gives you lots of useful information. Like how many people live in the place and sort of um, how many people have died and 
all kinds of stuff that we don't really need right at this moment, but uh, we will end up. It will end up being useful. Um, plus, it just kind of looks pretty, man. It looks pretty, uh, and then we can build a chapel. Uh, provides happiness. Um, although we don't need any happiness, everybody is incredibly happy. <laughs> everybody is so happy. Is Ty Lord happy? Check, check Ty Lord's happiness. Ty Lord is incredibly happy. Wow, is Diamona happy? Diamona happy. Diamona is it also incredible. Everybody is just incredibly happy. Even the people who shouldn't be, like Ty Lord, because nobody likes him. <laughs> nobody likes Ty Lord. Although he's a hunter now. That's, you know, another job that he can get fired from soon. But for, for, for now, he's making something of himself. I don't know what, but you know, something. I wonder if it's time to build another house. Because we've got quite a few people who have grown from children into adults and are still just like living with the parents and could probably move out and have kids of their own. Um, in fact, many of them are even old enough for that to, you know, not be too um, questionable. So maybe we should start thinking about building some more houses. Maybe we should build some more houses next to the trading board. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. Or we could build them along here. So they're not like too far away. Although these are the kids coming through, aren't they? The kids, I mean, these are the, the originals here. But, you know, the kids are, are coming through. Maybe they want like, you know, a little bit of distance. A little bit of distance from old mum and dad over here, you know. <coughs> As they start their own lives. Just just a nice bridge. It could be like an actual bridge between like Old Town and New Town, you know. Although there isn't much room for expansion over here. But um, I tell you what, we'll build a couple of little wooden houses. Uh, we want stone ones. Oh, I don't know if we want stone ones. I'm a bit ambitious at this point in the game. I mean, we've got plenty of stone because of all that fucking stone that I've made the mine. Oh, stone is one of the things that you will just run out of, isn't it? it? Seems like maybe a bit of a waste. There's plenty of stone over here we could mine, actually. We could mine that stone and build houses out of it. Yeah, we'll make some stone houses. Although I, I actually think that the wooden ones look prettier. But we'll have a couple of stone ones. Just two. Just two. We'll put one there and... Yeah, what one do we want? I think we'll have that one. That one there. A couple of stone houses for some of the kids um, to, you know, start their own lives. The 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 the, the, uh, the village is expanding just a little bit. It's advancing a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, I think actually I should have called this Magpie Village, not Magpie Town, because it's not a town yet, is it? It's a village. Um, but it will become a town. This will be, this eventually, this bit here will be known as Old Magpie Village. That's what it'll be called when, when the thing has expanded and there's lots of, you know, lots of different little communities all around the place. This will be the original and they will call it Old Magpie Village. And this over here, this is Magpie Forest. I've decided, oh fucking hell, the snow disappeared very quickly <laughs> as we moved into early spring. Um, and we survived winter without even, like, batting an eyelid. Like, our food went up instead of down. <laughs> That's how well we're doing. But it won't last, trust me. At some point, I keep saying this, but at some point it will all go wrong. Um, yeah, so this is Magpie uh, Forest over here, <clears throat> which is looking a bit bare. I really want some of these trees to grow a bit faster. But this is Magpie Forest, and this is Old Magpie Village. Although at the minute it's just Magpie Village, because it's not old yet. Um, and then this will be like... Upper Magpie Village? Upper Magpie Town. Upper Ma Yeah. Yeah, what if this now becomes... Right, okay. So this was Magpie Town. And then this is going to be Upper Magpie Town. So this becomes Lower Magpie Town. But in the future it will be Old Magpie Village. But at the minute it's not. This, so this is now Lower Magpie... Lower Magpie Town. And this is Upper Magpie Town. And this is uh, Magpie Forest... Um, and this is Magpie Lake over here, which we haven't reached yet, but we will. And this, this running through here, this is Magpie River. Um, <laughs> being really, really, really um, um, imaginative with my uh, naming here. So yes, this is Magpie River, Magpie Lake, Magpie Forest, Lower Magpie Town and Upper Magpie Town. That's what we've got so far. Check in with Tylord, see what's going on with him. Still a hunter. 
Not bad. Managing to hold that job down. He's been a hunter before, hasn't he? And he got fired from that one. I love how with Ty Lord, I always assume that it's because he got fired. Like anybody else, I'm just like, oh, they just, you know, swap jobs or something. Ty Lord, no, Ty Lord got fired. But that's because he always goes back to being a labourer. Always. And his diamonds, she's still a forester. That's marvellous. And Talzona, uh, Tal, 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 Talonza, <clears throat> I always mispronounce that one. But you know, it's their fault for giving their children such stupid names. Talonza um, has become a gatherer rather than being a blacksmith. Who's a blacksmith these days? Messica still. Um, he's probably just being a labourer most of the time. Um, we could up the tool limit. The thing is, I don't want to use up too many of my logs until the foresters is really sort of getting going. Because how many have you brought in? Brought in 29 this season and it's still early spring. 51 last season. I mean, that's not bad, but our woodcutter is going to need to keep using them. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. And I need—I do need logs to like build stuff with as well, because I would like to build a town hall. Um, although I may be trying to expand a bit too quickly, but you see, I want—I want a fucking symmetry as well. And that's going to take a lot of stone. Uh, what are we full up on? Storage for produced goods is near capacity. Produced goods. Oh my god, our storage barn is nearly full. Well, that's, um, interesting. Uh, what, what's our food limit? Is our food limit, um, 5,000? That's... I've never had that happen this early in the game, have I? Christ almighty, we might have to build a new storage barn. That's not something that you do very often. What's it full of? Just, like, food, mostly. <laughs> We've got so much food. We have got so much food like a ridiculous amount of food more than we need and it's just going up and up and up and up and up like we're, we're bringing it in faster than we can eat it um so what i'm really saying is i really need you to start having sex and having more children because christ we need to bring the food down a little bit <laughs> we don't have enough space to store it um should i build another storage barn that is really rare this early in the game i think it's the mods that i've got installed I think it's the it's the extra resources mod or whatever it is. I think I actually usually don't play with that one because of this. It actually makes it just a bit kind of ridiculous. Um, so farmer at the moment. Brennett! Have you been a farmer before? I'm not sure. Was Brennett a child when we first came here? I think he was, yes. Um, and he's planting squashes for the first time. Because we've had enough of pumpkins. <laughs> Mind you, a pumpkin is a squash. I don't know what the game means by just squash, but you know, because you know, pumpkin, pumpkin is, is a squash, but let's not question it too, but it probably means butternut squash, doesn't it? I mean, that looks like a butternut squash, kind of. Actually, it looks more like a chicken leg, but you know, um, what's that? Is that produced goods? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I just, um, actually, I know what we can do about that. But you'll need to give me a minute until the uh, trading port is complete. It's 93% complete. We're at 117 out of 140. Who are you? That is Lena. Lena, my darling. Keep working. Keep working. I need this to be finished. Like, as soon as humanly possible. Yeah, get your hammer out, girl. Get your hammer out. We are 120 of 140. Oh, she's got a friend helping her. Who's the friend? Dormando. Hello, Dormando. You were one of our originals, weren't you? Yes. Keep working at it, kids. We need this trading port finished as quickly as possible. 128, 97% complete. Get your saw out, saw that thin air. That's how it works. 98, 99. Come on, guys, keep at it, keep at it. There's a child watching you, who's that? That's Lanayla. Lanayla, Lanayla. How the fuck would you say that? Lanella, 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 who is Lena's sister. Fucking hell. Right, anyway, our trading port is complete. We need a trader. We need a trader. We need a trader. Where the fuck is the thing? Yeah, that says that there is room for six traders. I have never, ever had more than one trader working on a trading port post at a time. Regardless of how big the town gets, I only ever have one trader on. You only need one trader. Because you know what the trader does? 
Actually, I'll take this moment to explain a bit. Of, should I pause the game? No, we'll let the game keep running. I'll take a minute to, uh, yes, explain exactly what the trading post does. So, <clears throat> you stock the trading post up with something that you have a surplus of. Like, in our case, food. We have far too much food, more food than we could ever eat. So, if we tr uh, stock this up with food, and then when a trader comes along, and he will come along the river on his little boat, and you never know when he's coming, um, but he will just appear at some point, he will appear like here, and he'll come down the river in his little boat, um, and he will pull in at the trading board, and then we can trade whatever goods we have put in here for whatever he is offering. Um, and knowing our luck, the very first one will turn up will probably be a food merchant. <laughs> But it means you can use this as an extra storage system when you've got something that you've got a surplus of. Like something like, for example, we are always hitting capacity on firewood. So we could put firewood in and then we can just keep putting more and more in. So when we're hitting capacity, rather than our woodcutter stopping making wood, uh, firewood, they'll keep doing it because they'll be stocking up the trading port rather than stocking up um, here. Although this takes priority, so, you know. Um, but it means that you, you can have a proper economy going on. Like, so you're making stuff not just to use, you're making stuff also to trade. Um, it's not a, like a very um, advanced kind of economy because the traders don't turn up that often. And to be honest, once you've bought all of the different types of seeds and different types of animals, you don't really need the traders anymore. So, you know, it could be better, but it does create a kind of economy. So, we've got... Yes, so much food and far too much iron. So if we put, let's say, uh, 200 iron, 200 iron. And what have we got food wise? We have got lots of mushrooms, lots of onions, um, quite a lot of wild chicken meat. Hmm, loads of pumpkins. Let's put some pumpkins in here. So we'll put like 300 pumpkins. How many, how many were there? It was like 700 or something, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'll put 300 pumpkins in. We will put um, 100 mushrooms and 100 onions. 100 onions and 100 mushrooms and 80 chicken meat so we'll take that down to 100 80 chicken meat anything else we've got too much of um fish wow we have got so much fish yes we will put in 700 700 fish so, our little trader is now going to keep walking between the trading port and the storage barn and taking all of that stuff that I've just told him to take back to our little trading port. And then he's going to sit on his hands. Um, who is our trader? Lena! Lena, who built the trading post, is now going to work in the trading post. <coughs> so, yeah, she's going to put the amounts of stuff in there that I've told her to. And then she is going to sit and twiddle her thumbs until a trader turns up. And when the trader turns up, we will be able to trade the things that we have put in here for whatever it is he has. We will also be able to order some uh, stuff for the future. So when he comes the next time, he'll have sort of the thing that we want. Um, but there are different kinds of traders, like there's the food trader and there's the livestock trader and the seed trader and etc. etc. Um, so like if a food trader turns up right now, he is of literally no use to us whatsoever because my God, we have so much food. Um, so yeah, but um, what I really want is a trader with something like sheep or cows to turn up so that um, we can we can get some animals and then we can build like a pasture and we can have a proper little like farm. That's what I want. Uh, I love doing that. I love it when you, you build, because you build a pasture and you put whatever animal it is in there. There's cows, chicken or sheep. And then you can breed them. So they'll go up in numbers and then you can split the herd um, and put them in a different field. So you can start off with like three cows and end up with 500. Um, so it's like, it's actual farming. They work as actual farms, which I love very much. 
Uh, who moved into a little house? Weevely and Lena. Oh, oh, Lena the trader is now living next to the trading post. And she's married Weevely the fisherman. And she's 14. And he's 18. Why is the man always so much older? I find that a bit creepy, but okay. Um, and I mean, like, if they have a kid now, that's not terrible. All right, it's not awful. Bearing in mind this is in a medieval setting. It's not like... Really, or like Gisela was fucking 11 or something like that. So, you know, it's not terrible. Um, who's building this house? Uh, Kristen, who has decided to abandon the uh, the forester profession but because apparently the whole Ty Lord and Diamona situation probably just got too much for her. Um, and Dormando, lovely Dormando, building a lovely little house. Um, who are our foresters these days then? Brinley, Heleno, Gisela, wait. Diamona is a gatherer. Interesting. So she stayed in the forest and Tal uh, Talonza is now a hunter. What's his dad? Oh, his dad is a gatherer. Oh, well, well, well. The plot thickens. We only have two gatherers. And it's Ty Lord and Diamona. Well, spending all day together in the gatherer's hut. Well, I mean, they'll actually be spending the day out in the forest gathering, but coming back together to the gatherer's hut. Well, well, well. What is going on? These two are blowing hot and cold all over the place, aren't they? Jesus. So yes, they are gradually finding excuses to keep working together or keep working near each other. I mean, for a while they were the tanner and the tailor. Then he was a hunter and she was a... Um, a forester and now they're both gatherers they are literally working the same profession from the same hut i mean wow okay we need to keep an eye on these two i mean i know we've been keeping an eye on these two throughout the whole thing but we like really need to keep an eye on these two i need to know if diamond is ever going to have another child because <laughs> that would like really be you know um something to talk about poor Ty Lord just still living on his own man um, I mean, I don't know why I feel sorry for him about that. I mean, I live on my own. It's the best thing ever. Oh my God, it's the best thing. It's like actually the best thing ever living on your own. It's the best. I don't think I would ever go back to not living on my own ever again. You know that. Because it is just the best thing ever. Uh, there's another house. Taylor and Heidi. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Heidi, not Heidi. <clears throat> Because Tavo has been one of my favourites for a long time. He seems to be quite a good lad. He's always doing something important. And Hades quite a good one too. He's 20, she's 19. You see that? That is a good age gap there. Nine, a 19 year old and a 20 year old getting married. That's good, that is. Um, I hope they start having children. Although they've started very late by this game standards. But you know. Um, yes. So I appear to have kind of forced the game into making... Um, uh, people sort of um, more decent ages to start having children and things like that just by leaving it a bit to uh, build new houses. What's that? Storage to produce goods near capacity still. I mean, she's already fucking... Well, she hasn't moved much yet. She's uh, she's moving iron at the minute, so she hasn't actually moved anything from the, uh, the storage barn. Um, but I'm working on it, game, all right? I'm working on it. Although, even so, I think it'll still be a bit fucking... Maybe we should put the food limit to uh, 4,000. Because we clearly are producing food faster than we're eating it. So we don't need that much food. So if we put the cap down to 4,000, then um, they should stop producing food fairly soon. Uh, which means we're going to have loads of people who are just going to end up working as labourers. Because they'll have nothing to do, because almost everybody is in food production. Um, I tell them to clear this area? I don't know if I want the whole area cleared. I mean... Foresty at the minute. I, I think I want this to be like a towny kind of area. I would like a chapel and a... a cemetery. Just on the off chance, you know what I mean? In case somebody dies, I don't want the entire fucking village to go into mass depression. Um. How much is a chapel? Chapel, 50 logs, 130 stone and 30 iron. That's not terrible, you know. That's not terrible. And um, I'd either call it a chapel. That's quite clearly a fucking 
church. I mean, that's practically a flipping cathedral, that is. <laughs> chapel. Um, I did have a little mod installed that added like a little chapel. It was just a little one. I don't know what happened to that mod. But uh, it's not on my list of mods. But I definitely remember I had a thing and it was like a little kind of wooden chapel thing. It was very cute. Um, turn that around. Where do we want it? We want it somewhere where it's going to look nice and dramatic when people come down the river. By people, I mean traders, because they're the only ones who ever come down the river. But, you know, assuming that we would get visitors some someday. We want a nice, nice, like, view of the chapel. Put it, like, there-ish. So it's right on the waterfront. But where do we want it facing? Yeah, have it facing there. Be right on the waterfront. It'll look really nice and dramatic. Um, or we put it, like, at the back. No, no, I like having it down by the river. Put it, like... There-ish. Move it over a bit. Mm, oh, oh, I don't know where I want it. Actually, I would like to have some trees around it, so we'll not knock the trees down. Um, yeah, put it there. And then... Have a little cemetery. It's one stone per unit of length. Build it like... Oh, how big do we want it, man? That's going to be 36 stone. That's going to be 40 stone. And that'll be a decent enough size that we won't have to build another one for, you know, a short while. The graveyard there. Mm, but that's going to be kind of in the middle of things. Would we rather have a graveyard a bit out of the way? But then we'd have to swap the, the church and the graveyard around. No, we'll put that there like that. We'll have to get rid of all them trees. <clears throat> and I've only got two builders assigned, so it's going to take them a while. But that's fine, I don't mind particularly. Um, I really, really need people to start having children. Like, come on, guys, you've moved out of home, you've got married, you're in your, you're, you're, you're across the bridge. I mean, they can't hear you, you can have as much sex as you want. Like, seriously, I just start having kids. Really. Um, <laughs> the health is going up, I think. People's health going up? Had it dropped down to four hearts? I can't quite remember. I think it had. I'm sure the health is going up because we've got plenty of herbs. Um, our little herbalist. Is it still Irvine? Is Irvine still the herbalist? Irvine, are you still the herbalist? Yes! Marvellous! Oh, I love the fact. I love it when you get a villager who just... Because, I mean, they, they move around jobs so much. And ever so occasionally you get one who just picks a job and stays there. And I love that. And I love the fact that he lives in the little hut behind the herbalists. That is just wonderful. Irvine and uh, Gisela, and Gisela is still a forester, raising little Ralpha. I mean, Ralpha is five now. You, you maybe want to think about having another one? Guys, a guy, I mean, Gisela's like 18 now, so it would like be totally fine. I mean, come on. <laughs> Guys, please start having more children, please. Why has my thing disappeared? I don't want my thing to disappear. Um, yes, yeah, so we need more kids coming in, like, really. Really need more kids coming in. How's she doing? She's moved 500 fish, 200 iron and 100 mushrooms and fucking look at the food. We've still just got so much food. Um, I really need you to start having kids. I need a bit of a baby boom. That's what I need. Because um, I want to build a school at some point so we can start educating them. But at the minute I just can't afford to because like, I, d I don't have enough people. Although, actually... I mean, I do have enough people. We're bringing in enough food for everybody, right? And we've got enough people to fill all of the jobs that we currently have. And this lot down here, particularly, and the woodcutter are just like working with labourers occasionally. And I don't actually have anything for labourers to be doing at the minute. Because I'm not mining anything. So maybe now would actually be the perfect time to build a schoolhouse. Because what it means is that um, at the minute, at the moment they become 10, they become adults and they start working. But uh, if you build a school at 10, they'll become a student. So we don't start educating them until the age of 10, which is a bit concerning. But at 10, they become a student. And then I think it's not until they're about 18 or something that, that uh, they become workers. And educated adults um, work faster than uneducated ones. But the moment you build a schoolhouse, they start to, um, obviously, there'll be like a big gap because there'll be like eight in-game years, although it's not actually because it, they, they age faster than time passes. But, you know, um, there'll be a big gap where you have no new workers coming through. 
But, I mean, I don't really need any new workers coming through yet. We'll build a schoolhouse. Um, we may as well. We're going to have to do it at some point. So we'll build a little schoolhouse. Where do we want our little schoolhouse to be? I always like to build it a little bit out of the way so it's going to be, like, quiet for the kids. Um, so that they can, you know, learn their lessons all nice and quietly somewhere away from all the bustle. Um, near the church. Next to the church. Next to the church would be a good place for a school, wouldn't it? Next to the church. You can fit it in, like, there-ish. That would be right next to the church, wouldn't it? Right next to the river. So they can play by the river and hopefully not fall in and drown. <laughs> As I was saying that, I was like, oh, the children could play by the river. And I was like, maybe that's not the best idea in the world, actually. Yeah, we'll build a little schoolhouse there. Um, I still only have two builders, despite the fact I want them to build all of this stuff. But uh, yeah, who are our two builders? It's Tavo, good old Tavo, and uh, JC. Oh, I like JC. Um, JC deserves her own house. I think she should move out. We should build her a little house that she can move into. Because how old is she now? She's 17. Yeah. I definitely need to start building more houses for people. Should we build some wooden ones down here? Because um, we've built a couple of stone ones. But we're going to be using a lot of stone. So I want stone houses up here and wooden houses down here. Because this is like, this is lower Magpiton and this is upper Magpiton. Um, so we'll build a couple of um, little wooden houses. Um, as opposed to big wooden houses. I don't know why I put the little in there. I'm just waffling, to be honest. I haven't had much sleep over the past few days. Um, <laughs> I've had like... I think last night I had about four hours because I just couldn't sleep last night. I have no idea why. Um, and the night before, I was doing the early shift, so I had to be up at half four. And when I have to be up that early, it's weird. It's like my brain just goes, oh, you have to be up early, so there's probably no point in going to sleep. And I'm like, no, brain, I kind of need my sleep. And then, my, and then my brain's like, oh, no, no, I mean, you have to be up at half four. That's like practically half an hour away, isn't it? And I'm like, no, brain, no. I could still get a good six hours in, you know, but oh no. So so I always end up just not sleeping when I'm doing the um when I'm doing the uh, the early shift. And then the night before that I had stayed up late editing I think it was the previous part of this. So yeah, I've over the past few days I've not had that much sleep at all. Um, so I'm a little bit kind of just uh you know, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, that was my impression of myself. Uh, yeah, we'll put a couple of little houses and then we'll put a gap there so we can have a little path going through. Do we have that one facing the other way then? Um, oh fuck, I'm pressing the wrong fucking key there. There we go. And then have it facing <coughs> that way and we'll put a little path up because I do like it to look pretty, guys. Don't know if you've noticed that yet. Um, oh, oh, we've got eight children. Who, who, who? A child named Fletchel was born and a child named Cassandria was born. Like, what is wrong with Cassandra? Why did you need to put the I in there just to make my life a little bit harder? Cassandria and Fletchel. So we say, I, I need you to tell me who, whose children they are, though. Um, well, Diamona hasn't had any more. That's good. Uh, Cassandria is Messica and Callus's child. Oh, Messica and Callus, you've still got it in you. That's because one of your children has left home. And I can't remember who it was. Um, oh, and Weaverly and uh, Lena have had Fletchel. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> My little villagers are growing up. <laughs> making lives for themselves. It's so beautiful. You two need to get a fucking shufty on. I mean, Christ. Um... <laughs> You're practically ancient by this game's standards. Um, oh, that's so lovely. They've had little Fletchel. Oh, I'm gonna keep an eye on Fletchel because I feel like he's part of like the third generation. He's like, because Weaverly and Lena, Lena was definitely born here. I can't remember whether Weaverly was. I think Weaverly was already um, a child. I think he was one of the children at the beginning, but Lena was definitely born here and now she's had a child of her own. <laughs> Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yes, but uh, I can't remember who it, it was who's moved out of here. Was it... Because Lena, Lena was uh, with, uh, with Dormando and Kristen because it was Lena and Lenalia, or whatever, however the fuck you're supposed to pronounce that. Um, Tavo... Heidi, I'm sure, 
lived over here with Arl Island Eleanor. Was it? I'm sure. Yeah, because it was Hady and Jace. Or JC. I'm sure they lived in the same house. Tavo? I think Tavo was Messica and Callus' son. I'm sure. And Weaverly, I cannot fucking remember where Weaverly came from. Um. Oh, Taylor's a forester now, is he? What's uh, Diamona? Diamona's a hunter. Oh my god, these two just can't make their fucking minds up. I said they're they're just dancing around each other in this forest over here. I mean, they're just keeping keeping jobs in the forest all the time, but just like dancing around each other. They didn't last as gatherers. I think Diamona's becoming a bit tainted by Ty Lord, to be honest with you. I think she's letting him get to her because she doesn't seem to be able to hold down a job anymore either. So I think just the entire village is just sick of their drama. I think that's what's going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, our little houses are being built over here. I've only got two builders and I need 12. <laughs> Bless them. Um, but the labourers seem to do a good amount of job on the building work as well. I think they do like a lot of the um, fetching and carrying. I think the labourers like chop trees down and stuff and take, take stuff away. And I think they also supply the stone and stuff like that and the builders are just the ones who actually physically build the flipping stuff. They're both assigned to the chapel at the moment. Who have we got? Hadi and Tavo are oh, the builders. Um, oh, and they're married. Oh, it's so lovely, man. It's so lovely. They're going to build the chapel. Um, and they are... Oh, they're actually currently building the house over here. They're assigned to the chapel, but they're building the house. That's fine. That's all right. You can build the house. I mean, I need to encourage more fucking children to be born, so I'm quite happy for you to be building the house. Oh, new child, Cliver. Because Clive would just be too fucking easy, wouldn't it? I'm going to see who's moved into that house in a minute, but I want to find out who's had Cliver. Is it you two? <gasps> yes, it is! <gasps> it's Tavo and Hady. That means... Ta that, mean that means Hady. At the moment that Cliver was born, Hady was fucking building a house. I have to assume that she was nine months pregnant when she was building a house. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love you, Hayden. You are a you are a tough girl. You are. Um, <laughs> yes, but they've had little Cliver. Who's another boy? We definitely have more boys born than girls because Fletchel's a boy, isn't he? Um, where, where Fletchel was over here. Fletchel's a boy. Cassandria is a girl. Um, and Azariah. I really like that name, actually, Azariah brilliant i must use that somewhere it's one of those names i've got a, a list of names I've, well i've got a notebook i've got lots of notebooks but i've got um this one where i write down stuff for like stories and things like that and i've got a list of names and whenever i come across a name that i really like and i'm like oh that would be a great name for a character and i write it down and i've got a big long list of names um but yes azariah is a lovely name do you think Azar would azariah be a hero or a villain I can't decide whether Azariah sounds like a sort of nice main character um, or a kind of like evil sorceress Azariah. I think Azariah would be like a main character. I'd have a main character called Azariah. Or maybe it would be like a sidekick. Do you have a sidekick called Azariah? I don't know, but it's a, it's a nice name is what I'm saying. It's a nice name and now they're busy building uh, this house. Still Hady, she's got a fucking zero-year-old child at home. <laughs> she's literally just given birth while building that house and now she's building this house. Right, let's see who's moved into these. Brenna and JC. Oh, that's lovely. So, um, our Lyle and Eleanor are now looking a little bit empty nesty over here. But they've got Maggie, um, who is six years old. Because JC's moved out with Brennett. I can't remember where Brennett came from. Was Brennett... Was Brennett there? Because I feel like... Oh, Brennan might have been... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember where Brennan came from. And and Talonza and Sabrinley. Oh, Talonza has flown the nest. Well, well, well. Um, and married Sabrinley. And hopefully they will do much better than fucking... Ta uh, that's Tylord. I thought that was Tylord's house that I clicked on. And I was like, whoa, where the fuck's Tylord gone? Um, yeah, better than Tylord and, um, and Diamona. Don't take after your parents, Tal uh, Talonza, all right? Just don't do that, man. Is that Talonza there? Yes. And uh, he's the tanner these days. That's rather nice, isn't it? Who's the blacksmith? Messica has become the blacksmith. Good old Messica, always doing something useful. Um, 
He's just one of those ones that, like, there's no drama attached to Messica. He just, he just goes on with his life. He does. He just, you know, good worker. Doesn't cause any, uh, doesn't cause any hassle. Much like Callus, who is uh, the tailor these days. Marvelous. But yeah, it's getting to the point where it's now going to be a bit difficult for me to keep track of everybody. There's that many little families all over the place. Um, but oh, it is nice. It, it's nice that uh, Talonza has moved out with old Sabrinley. Where did Sabrinley come from? can't remember um but anyway yes that's nice i'll keep an eye on those two because i like talonza i feel a bit sorry for him caught up in the drama of his parents you know um <laughs> oh diamond has become the gatherer again tylon's still a forester yeah they they're just like dancing around each other in the forest over here god knows what's going on there but <laughs> let's just not get involved um that is a lot of stone that we've got over there Where's our chapel going? Have they actually started building that yet? No, they're still putting resources into it. And they're clearing the bit over here for the cemetery. And they've done nout for the schoolhouse yet. But that's fine. I'm in absolutely no rush. Um, in fact, ideally, I'd like a few more children to age up a bit before um, the school gets built. I mean, Valeriel's nine. Maggie's six. She's a bit young. Um... Who else have we got? Alania's six, Azariah's six. Rich is nine, so we've got two nine-year-olds ready to come through. They'll probably grow up before um, <coughs> before the schoolhouse is built, so we'll get a few more workers in. Um, but we're doing all right for the minute. Food's gone down a bit. Um, ah! I mean, we've had three children born, so maybe we are now consuming food faster than we're actually making it. Um, or it could just be because she's, you know, put 700 fish in, in the, uh, the trading port. Who's, uh, who's our trader? It's still Lena. Good, good, good. That's what I like to see. Um, and Tabo and Heidi are still our builders, who are basically just having to build everything single-handed. <laughs> yeah, we just, they've already built two houses, and now we want them to build a chapel, a cemetery, and a schoolhouse. And then I'll probably get them to build a, um, town hall after that. But we need to keep an eye on it because I've been saying all this time <clears throat> that you'll get to a tipping point where everything's fine and everything's fine and everything's wonderful and it's all brilliant and you're bringing in way too much of everything and then you'll start expanding a bit rapidly and it'll be like straw that breaks the camel's back and all of a sudden everything will get out of hand and you'll have not enough firewood and not enough food and there'll be too many people in too many houses and you know, I've just built four houses in a row and had three child be born, uh, children be born in quick succession. And more are probably coming. And um, yeah, you need to keep an eye on it just to make sure that we're still sort of in profit food wise. Cause it might just have gone down simply because, you know, she's put a load of food in the, the trading post. But, you know, you need to, you just need to keep an eye because it's not going up as quickly as I would have thought. I mean, they're bringing in the harvest now. Our farmer, whoever that is these days. Is it Leleno? Leleno. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and that has not got up, gone up as dramatically as I would have thought. But we have got four new houses. We're still doing all right with firewood. Um, going into, uh, into winter. But, keep an eye. We're up to 3,000 food. I mean, we're doing all right. Uh, there's no need to panic yet or anything, but the moment that number starts going up slower, you have to kind of be thinking. I mean, I know at the minute we're in like a massive profit food-wise, so we actually want it to be going up slower. But you just always got to be a bit careful. You've always got to be thinking ahead in Banished. You've always got to be like five steps ahead of yourself. Um, should we build a nice path along here? Up to the church, uh, which can then go along to the, uh, the school cool house almost clear the space for the cemetery they're busy building the chapel is it still Hadey and what's my doodle uh tavo yes brilliant our two builders tavo and Hadey, just building up a mag python um, completely single-handedly uh how's the forest looking all of these trees are still quite little but i mean they have filled up the gaps when these trees grow up a bit more it should look more like like a proper forest Whoever our foresters are these days. Dormando. Tylord. Tylord is a forester. And Gisela. Lovely Gisela. Um, who's still a forester. 
Is air, uh, what's his face, still the herbalist? Irvine. Irvine's still the herbalist. Yes, he is. Brilliant. I love those two. I, I love those two. They've, they decided, you know what? We want to live in the forest and we want to work in the forest. I, he's going to be the herbalist. She's going to be a forester. And they've just stuck at it. They've stuck at it for years and years and years. Not like bloody Ty Lord and Dom, uh, um, what's her name? Diamona, who just can't fucking settle on anything and just keep jumping between jobs and dancing around each other and all of this drama. Oh, no, 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 no. Irvine and Gisela, they have got it sorted. They know what they want. They know what they want. They, they wanted their little cottage in the woods. He wanted to be a herbalist. She wanted to be a forester. They've got their little son that they're, they're raising. And they've just stuck at it. And, you know, just no drama. Just no drama. That's the kind of shit I like. How are we doing for coats? Because I'm very conscious that we're not producing animal skins and leather and wool and the like at much of a rate really like for them to be able to get into proper coat production um we could really do with having a, a livestock trader turn up so that we can get some sheep or some cows um sheep would be ideal because i think sheep produce both wool and animal skins although only if you kill them obviously um you can get wool without killing them um, but I, I want some sheep and some cows. I mean, I would like some chickens as well because chickens are lovely. But I mean, ideally, I want sheep and cows to um, produce wool and leather for these two. Um, and we could have them, cause, you know, like it becomes a proper working economy um, when you've got stuff like that. Like we could have a, a field of sheep here and a bigger field of cows down here. And they would be literally supplying the things that these two need to make um to make the coats we've had valeriel has uh, become an adult and is working as a laborer by become an adult you mean she's turned 10 years old <laughs> and we haven't built the schoolhouse yet uh, but that's fine we, we always need more laborers how are they doing with that chapel 43 of 150 it's going to take them a wee while isn't it that's all right i'm not in any great rush i think the food situation is still plenty under control we're back up to 3200 and it's late autumn so you know um, I really want a trader to turn up. Really want a trader to turn up. Although what happens is that one turns up and then like it's not the one you want. It'll be the fucking food trader and I don't need food. And he'll turn up four times before somebody else turns up. <laughs> That's what'll happen. I wish you could summon them. I wish they turned up more frequently because they do. It takes them ages, ages for a trader to turn up. Right now, fucking Hady. Uh, if, if she is it Hady who's the uh, trader no it's Lena isn't it yes yeah, so of course it is yeah fucking Lena's just like twiddling her thumbs she's got nothing to do so how's the living situation going we've got Galandra who is 17 and still living at home uh, Maggie's still a child Tylord's still a loner um, neither of these two have had kids yet they'll get on that they'll get I believe I, I really want T uh, Talonza to have a kid of his own um uh uh la 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 or whatever her name is is still a child azariah and cassandria are still children rich is still a child and ralph is still a child so there's only um galandra who is an adult still living at home so there's not really any point in building any more houses yet which is fine i don't want things to expand too quickly um because then it starts to lose the nice community feel, which it will do eventually anyway, but I don't want it to do that. I don't want that to happen like really, really quickly. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We've had a child named Arnon or Armin. Is that Armin? That's Armin. Who's had Armin? Is it Talonza? It's not Talonza. Uh, it's Brennan and JC have had Armin. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, JC's a builder and Brennan's a hunter and they've had little Armin. Oh, that's nice. You two need to fucking hurry up, don't you? Fucking, uh... Oh, no, wait. They had Cliver. Who was it who needed to hurry up, then? There was somebody who I said needed to hurry up. Oh, I don't know. But we've only got Talonza and Sabrinley now who are, um... Who we're still waiting for. Although, as these, as these nests empty, the uh, older parents might start having more kids. You never know. Could happen. Um... Diamond is not going to have another kid, is she? Unless uh, <laughs> flipping Tylord. Um, 
Actually, what the game might do, I don't know how, I don't know if the game like tracks how people might be related to each other, but the game might conceivably, because Rich is now um, 10 years old and technically an adult, the game might conceivably go, oh, it's an adult woman living with an adult man, they'd better have a child. <laughs> I don't know whether it would do that. I don't know whether it sort of tracks the fact that Rich is probably Diamona's son. Because um, he was born and lived in her house. So, you know, I don't know if it actually does that or not. Hopefully it does. Because if Diamona has another kid, that's going to set the fucking rumour mill going again, isn't it? Because, I mean, these two just... They just don't... I just... I don't know what's going on with them anymore, to be honest with you. They're just, like, rotating jobs like nobody's business. For a while, Diamona was, like, the, the, the sort of reliable, steady one who always had steady work, and Ty Lord was just, like, a loser who <laughs> was constantly being fired from every job he got. But now, I don't know what's happening, to be honest with you. I've lost the thread of things. But I'm happy that Talonza has moved out and... <gasps> they've had the little... They've had Melvi! Oh, they've had a daughter, which is rare in this place because for some reason everybody just has sons. Oh, they've had little Melvi. Oh, this is so nice, guys! This is so nice! The kids are having kids of their own. <gasps> I feel so proud. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, each one of them has now had a child. Oh, that's lovely, and then they'll probably start having more, and then I'll run out of food because uh, there'll be too many people. But uh, we'll think about that in the future. Um, how's our chapel looking? It's looking good, isn't it? Oh, I love it when you start building the little stone buildings and it starts to look more like a proper little town. Oh, it makes this bit down here look a bit fucking... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Shabby, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, lower magpie tends looking a bit shabby these days next to the nice stone houses and the trading post and the lovely chapel oh it's gonna look so good guys it's gonna look so good so once all of this is built we're gonna need um priest um is that what it's called a cleric we're gonna need a cleric <clears throat> and we're gonna need a teacher what's near capacity produced goods oh yes the food situation is definitely um Yes, okay, so we might want to put some more stuff in the trading post. We've got quite a lot of squashes now. <laughs> we've used all of our pumpkins, we've got quite a lot of squashes. And mushrooms, we've got so many mushrooms. Right, we'll put another hundred mushrooms. Where's mushrooms? We'll put another hundred mushrooms in there. Um, and we'll put some squashes in. We'll put maybe 200 squashes. What else have we got a lot of? We've got a lot of deer meat. Um, oh, fish. Yeah, we've just got fucking loads of fish. Right, we'll put some more fish in. We'll put fish up to um, a thousand. And we'll put some... Where's deer meat? Wild deer meat. We'll put like a hundred? Yeah, we'll put a hundred of that in. Because if it suddenly gets to the point where we're eating food faster than we're producing it and we end up losing food really quickly, we've now got like a thousand fish stored over here that we can just move back across in a pinch if we absolutely need to. So really it's just like another place to store stuff, which is nice. Um, I'll tell you what else we could build for that. We could build a, um, a marketplace. Um, although I'm not sure that that's really necessary right at this moment. But that's another way of um, just like storing more stuff. I can't remember exactly how the marketplace works, actually. Uh, how does the marketplace work? Used to pro uh, provide a localised area for citizens to collect food, tools and fuel. Yeah. So, like, if I wanted to build more houses, say, over here. If I wanted a little community over here, but it's a bit far away from the storage barn and the, um, the storage area for logs and stuff. Um... What they would do is that they they would like take things from this storage barn and from the um, storage area here and stuff like that and just move it into the marketplace. So rather than having to build like another storage barn and another thing, it sort of combines the two. Am I explaining this very well? So it's it's just easy to build like another little community over here. Um, you don't sort of have to start from scratch. You just build a marketplace and then build houses around it. And what's really nice is that you find yourself building little, like... Um, like, say you build a quarry. You need more stone. And you've got plenty of workers, so you build a quarry. But then, it would be convenient to have the quarry workers living 
next to the quarry. So you build houses there. But then those houses need things like um, food, obviously, and firewood. So you build a marketplace so that they take the food and the tools and the, the, uh, the clothes and the firewood that they need and they put it in that marketplace. Um, and then maybe they need a schoolhouse for their children because the schoolhouse is all the way over here. And plus, each schoolhouse can only have, I think, 20 students. Um, we need a cleric now, so I'll just get a, rid of one of them builders and get a cleric. Cleric, there we go. Um, yeah, so the schoolhouse is all the way over there. And I think each schoolhouse can only take 20 pupils at a time. So maybe, you know, they need another school for their children, so you build another schoolhouse down here. And it becomes a little community built around the quarry like happens in real life um or used to i don't know if it still does so much now but like you know in the old days you had mining towns and then you had fishing towns and then you had um farming towns you know <clears throat> because you had the thing that brought people to the area which was work and then the community built around it um and i live in what used to be a mining town although kind of a fishing town as well because it's on the coast and one of my favourite things is just to, like, walk around and see... Well, I walk around with my mum, because my mum grew up here. And she has a story for every street, honestly. You walk around <laughs> this town with my mum, and she can tell you who lived in every house, honestly. It is very weird. But, uh, yeah, and she does have, a, a, like, a story for every street. But you can see, like, what used to be the old um, mining cottages where the miners would live. Um... And, so, and I, I love things like that. But yeah, you can do that in Banished where you'll have like a farming community. So, you know, when we eventually get cows and sheep and stuff, I'll build fields to put the cows and the sheep in. But then I'll build houses around it for the farmers to live in. And it'll become a little farming community. And then at some point we'll build a quarry and it'll become a little quarry community. And then at some point we'll build a mine and it'll become a little mining community. Um, and it's just really nice. You can do that in Banished. It's one of my favourite things about it. And that sort of is what replaces the nice community feel that you have at the beginning. So this that we've got at the minute where I know who all of the villagers are and I know whose children everybody is and stuff like that. Um, we've had a lot of children be born. I, I will look at that in a moment. <coughs> that also, We'll start to lose that as we expand more. But it's replaced by that sort of thing of building little communities around certain, you know... Um, professions. Right. We've had... Oh my god. Penelon, Chiara, Ki Chiara? I'm going to say Chiara. And Rose. <laughs> Rose, a surprisingly normal name for this game. Right, let's see who's had who. So, nothing new there. Kira is Arlyle and Eleanor. Oh, flippin' heck, man. Arlyle and Eleanor have still got it. They have still got it. They are still having children, even now. Um, Kiara. They've got little Maggie who's eight and then they've got Kiara. I can't remember who their other children were, sadly. I should have written it all down. Um, although I've got it recorded so I can just go and look. Um, and Penelon, that's uh, Leleno and Rainy have had Penelon. Lovely. So they've still got it in them as well. The house is getting a bit crowded now. Maybe I should build another one. Um... They've not had anyone. They've not had anyone. Daimona hasn't had a kid, which is probably just as well. <laughs> um, I think there's enough gossip going around regarding her. Rose is Irvine and Gisela's uh, son. Son? Really? <laughs> oh, come on, game. I was like, oh, you've given a child a normal name. You've called a boy Rose. Really? Okay. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah, so they've had their little son, Rose. Um, they've got two boys now, Rose and Ralpha. That's what, actually, Ralpha sounds like it should be a girl as well, doesn't it? But, you know, we'll not question that too much. Never mind. Uh, but it's nice that they've had another kid because they're my favourite. He's still the herbalist and she's still the forester. You see, I just fucking love that. That's brilliant. I mean, it would be even better if she was a gatherer, actually. Because then, like, she lives literally opposite the gatherer's hut. But you know what? Her being a forester, that's brilliant. They're just, like, they're just the forest family they are. I love that. Those two are brilliant. Um, who else was there? Penelon. Have, have I already found Penelon? Did I find Penelon? I did find Penelon, didn't I? Penelon was... 
Yes, Penang was uh, Lalano and Rainey's um, daughter. This is lovely. We've got new kids coming through. Um, our food has dropped quite dramatically again. Is that because of... Is, oh, now. Is that because she's put food in here? Or is that because we now have far too many people? Hmm. Um, I mean, we're on 2,400. It's not that bad. We can always think about, you know, putting another fisherman on or something like that. Oh, is that our cemetery built? Right. So we've got zero of 32 graves. So now, if anybody dies in childbirth or freak accident or illness or whatever... We are absolutely sorted, we're covered, we've got a cemetery to bury them in, which means nobody will be sad about their passing. <laughs> nobody. And happiness is still at five stars. Everybody is still just like really, really super happy all the time. Uh, we only need two builders now, we just need to wait for the, uh, the schoolhouse to be built. And then we'll be pretty much sorted. So we've got... Yeah, so we can see how many people are in the village completely because of how many members um, are in the chapel. So there's 35 members in the chapel. Um, and people now go to church on a Sunday and it makes them happy because they drink tea and they eat biscuits and they catch up on the local gossip and everybody knows that that's what church is for. <laughs> we used to go to church when I was a kid. I used to go to Sunday school. Although it wasn't proper Sunday school. It wasn't like, let's sit down and learn about Jesus. It was, let's put the children in the back room so that they don't make noise during the service and give them some colouring in to do to keep them occupied. That's what Sunday school was for me. Um, and I used to love it because I loved colouring in it and that's all we did in Sunday school so yeah it wasn't like it wasn't actually teaching us about the bible like Sunday school is meant to be it was just keeping us out of the way while you know the adults sung hymns and whatever we've had another child be born um, and now we need a teacher put a teacher in um, yes so um, but uh, we used to go to church and I mean you were allowed in for a bit of the service we used to be in like for the, the first bit um, and then they would kind of shuffle us away and then they'd be in for the second bit because I, I used to go up and do the whole you know where you kneel in front of them and they give you like the bread and the um, the wine although obviously we didn't have the wine as children but we used to get the bread um, or did we? maybe we didn't actually but I remember I used to get like you know they do the thing on your forehead where they sort of bless you I used to really enjoy doing that, getting to go up and kneel in front of the uh, in front of the vicar, because it was a proper old church as well in our village, a proper church, proper stone one with nice wooden pews and uh, stained glass and everything. A real proper church. It was really nice. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, yes, my my point is that afterwards they would get like the tea out and the biscuits and, and we would have juice as the children and you would get there was like like every biscuit imaginable they just had like a table full of biscuits and everybody would just kind of mingle and and catch up on the local gossip and that's what it was about that's what church was about it wasn't about praying or religion or anything like that it was about getting together having a bit of a sing-along and then just catching up on the local gossip really i think that's what church is for most people to be honest with you um, and that's probably why having the church is making the villagers happy because you know they've got somewhere to meet up once a week and just kind of catch up have a bit of a gossip about ty lord and diamona you know <laughs> have a bit of a natter about what's going on with them. <laughs> have you heard the latest about old Tylord and Diamona? <laughs> um, <laughs> they're both working in the forest, you know. Um, yes, Amar. Anyway, we've had a child called Amar. Who's had Amar? Oh! <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> it's fucking Diamona. <laughs> well, we know what's the talk of the church this week. Well, fucking hell, Diamona, you just keep popping out sons, don't you? Nobody knows who the fucking fathers are. So Tylord's still a hunter, Diamona is now the gatherer, so they are out in the forest together quite a lot. Just gonna say. I mean, I think we can agree that uh, Rich is pro probably Tylord's son. I think definitely there was some uh, shenanigans going on there that caused that. And uh, Amar, I mean, they're out in the forest together so much. I mean, you know, I think Diamona and Tylord is a kind of can't live with him, can't live without him sort of situation. I think, I think there's there's a lot of um, uh, unhealthy feelings going on here, but <laughs> they just keep accumulate. They just keep resulting in more and more children being born. 
So yes, flipping egg, that fucking the fucking saga of Diamoda and Tylor just keeps taking more and more twists and turns, doesn't it? Who is our cleric anyway? Oh it's Hady! Oh that's lovely. Hady has become our cleric. She did so much time as the builder. Building the chapel and the um, cemetery and she built these houses. I think she built these ones as well over here. And now she's she's become the cleric. After all of that hard work, that hard back-breaking work, she's become the cleric and now she's just tending to the people. That's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. She's tending to the people, making everybody happy, getting them together once a week and sharing her words of wisdom. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, who is our teacher? Oh, Lyle! Yes! Yes! Yes, Arlyle, who was our first farmer, and he has always done something useful. He's been the farmer, he's been the woodcutter. I'm pretty sure he was the tailor at one point, or the blacksmith. Um, he's been a forester, I think. He's just like, he, him and Eleanor are the power couple who just keep the fucking village together. They are. It is absolutely beautiful. Eleanor's back to being the woodcutter again. It It is absolutely beautiful that Arlyle has become the teacher. That is brilliant. He is the perfect person to be teaching the new generation. Um, we currently have zero students. Have we got nobody who's... Um, uh, Lanela, uh, Lene, Lene, however you're fucking meant to pronounce that. She's eight, so she'll be coming through soon. Azariah is eight. Rich just missed it because <clears throat> he's now a worker. Um, Maggie is eight. And I think Ralpha over here should be eight as well, yeah. So we've got a few eight-year-olds, but nobody is actually a student yet. But uh, soon enough, the students will be coming through. Okay, I think that will do us for now. So we've had a good amount of children being born. We've expanded our little town up to here, up to Upper Magpiton. Um, built a few more houses. We've got a nice chapel to keep everybody happy. We've got a schoolhouse, so um, our children are going to get educated soon enough. We've got a cemetery, just in case anybody happens to die. Um, it's always best to be prepared. And we've got a trading port for when a trader eventually turns up. Is there any sign of a trader yet? It doesn't look like it, does it? Hopefully a trader will turn up at some point soon. And hopefully he'll have something useful on him like, you know, cows or sheep. Um, that we can start. And then we can start farming them to make a more kind of sustainable um, supply of resources for leather and wool for the tailor. Because uh, we've only got 21 coats. I mean, they're not doing very well because they need they need to wait for the hunters to produce animal skins and wool. But if we're farming animals, we'll be producing them, like, more reliably. And it'd be nice to turn this bit here into, like, a little farming area, wouldn't it? Because we've already got the, the field. So it's already a bit of a farming area. But if we could get some animals, we could have a big field of uh, cows and then a smaller one of sheep. And then maybe a little chicken coop somewhere. Oh, it would look so lovely, man. It would look so lovely. Anyway, yeah, that'll do us for now. We've had some we've had some good progress. Some some children being born. And it's starting to get to the point where we're at 36 members now. 36 villagers. It's starting to get to the point where I might start to lose track of people a little bit. But we will definitely keep an eye on the unfolding saga of uh, Tylord and Diamona. <laughs> And we'll keep a, an eye on their lovely soul, son, um, Talonza, who is, is, you know, he's one of my favourites, he is. Oh, that's nice. He's the tailor and Sabrina is the blacksmith, so they're working next to each other. Well, that's quite nice, that is. Who's the tanner? Messica! Good old Messica. Anyway, yes, I'm going to go now. And I will see you again next week. Probably. Probably. Yeah, probably.